Good morning, Cross Kids. It is a blessing to be here today. I am so glad to be a part of this service today with you because as you know, I've been away, but Sister Young is back in town now and very happy to be before you. Just want to take this time to welcome everyone here. We hope we even have some new people out there. We welcome you to our Children's Cross Kids service today. Now first we're gonna start off with a prayer. So we want you all to get in prayer position and remember prayer is just talking to God and it's a time to be extremely serious. Okay, so let's hold our hands and bow our heads and go before the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Lord, we praise you for this new day that you have given us. We thank you that we are able again to have service for the children um, at Crossroad Christian Church. We thank you for all the many blessings that you have given us. We thank you, Lord, that you've kept us through this pandemic, through this COVID-19. You have kept us. We made it. We thank you for that, Lord God. We ask you to bless over this lesson today, to open the minds of everyone who's going to hear the message. We ask you to bless Sister Ethel as she delivers the message today that you will speak through her to each and every one of us through this message not just the children, but even the adults. We bless your holy name, Lord. We ask you that you will forgive us for the things that we've done wrong. And we've all fallen a little bit short. And we just ask you to forgive us in the precious, precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Next, we're going to have praise and worship. It is that time. And the song we're going to do today is All Around the World. We've done that one before. We're going to do All Around the World. Something's going on. It's about Jesus' love. And it's what? Amazing. So let's everybody get up from your seats. Let's get to moving. Get to moving those bodies to praise God. Another way that we praise God, the Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ. So let's go with it all around the world.
wasn't that fun to just be all up in the Lord and just give him praise and honor because he is what? Truly amazing. And now we're getting ready to turn things over to get the main part of this today, which is your lesson. And to give you your lesson today is none other than that wonderful teacher, Sister Ethel Donaldson. So we turn it over to her who's going to teach you the lesson today on this Valentine's Day about the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise right. the Lord. Amen. Yay. Thank you so much for that awesome uh, introduction, Sister Young. And just like the our praise and worship song that we had today said, Jesus love is amazing. So, hey kids, you know, when you think of love, the first thing that comes to mind is what? A heart. A heart. We think of love, we think of a heart. And the heart is pretty much the universal sign of love. Everybody that thinks of love, you make a heart with your hand, you, you have the hearts on your um, Valentine's cards if you're uh, in school on some hybrid days or even home doing a Valentine's activity. And Valentine's Day is a day to set aside on the calendar to talk about love. So let's see what our basic instructions before leaving Earth tell us about love. Well, when I was doing my study about telling you guys today about Jesus, uh, Jesus is Jesus love. Oh, get tongue tied. Wow, Sister Ethel uh, need a little practice on her tongue saying the words today. But um, Jesus love is amazing. And we also know that Jesus is love. So I have a little trick up here. So I have this heart, but behind it, I have another heart. And behind this heart, it says, Jesus is love. So we're gonna learn about our heart and we're gonna learn about the heart of the Father. Jesus love and how that love changes our heart. Did you know that the word love is in the Bible more than 700 times? That's a lot of times for the word love to show up. So love is very, very important. And because Jesus is so amazing, he is love. But when I was studying to help share this uh, message with you guys today about Jesus' love, I saw in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9, that it was telling me that the heart ain't so good. It says that the heart is deceitful. That means that it ain't always doing the right thing or feeling the right thing. And that's based upon what's put into the heart. So when you get some time, read that with your parents and talk about it. Jeremiah 17, 9. Hmm, the heart not being so good. Well, for us, the heart is love, so why ain't it good? Well, the heart has a desire to sin. Yeah, let's talk about that. We're gonna matter of fact, Sister Ethel's gonna write the word sin in the middle of this heart so you can see it. We're gonna write it nice and big. S I N Sin. When we're born, we are born in sin. So that means our heart already has sin in it. And we need to figure out how to get that sin out of our heart and how to make our heart good. Well, the Bible teaches us, when you study your word, that God knew thousands and thousands of years before you were even born that there needed to be a plan in place to make our heart good. Hmm. What do you think God did? It's a scripture that everybody knows very, very well. It's the basis of our message today. Let's say, let's say John 3, 16. Say it together. John 3, 16. 
Do you anybody remember what that scripture is? I'm sure there's quite a few out there that know it. I know some of them know it from beginning to end. Some of those KCA kids that grew up here in the KCA school, they know it from, from beginning to end with their eyes closed, turned around backwards, they can say it. But John 3.16 tells us the plan that God put in place to make our heart good. John 3.16 tells us that God so loved the world all the people in the world. He loved us even when we didn't love him. And he loves those that don't even know him. He loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Now let's just talk about that only begotten. How many of y'all have ever had only one piece of candy or one piece of gum or one of your favorite thing and you had to give it away? And it was your favorite. You had waited for it and waited for it and waited for it. And then somebody told you you had to give it away. Hmm. Would the heart want to give it away? Or would the heart want to act in sin? Hmm. Well, God knew that sometimes the heart can be deceitful. It may think about wanting to do something, but then it doesn't do it. So that plan in John 3.16 said that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's a scripture that you really need to talk to with your friends, your family, your parents about and really, really get to know what does that John 3.16 mean to me? Well, what it means is that God took this sin that was in our heart and he put it on his son, Jesus. And everybody knows that Jesus went to where? What is this, kids? This is a what? What is this? This is a cross. So Jesus took our sins that was in our heart and put it on his back and took it to the cross. And when he went to the cross, he died and he bled for our sins. He took all of the sins of the world with him to the cross so that when we believe and confess that he is Jesus and that he died for the sins that were in our hearts and the sins that we have done or don't even know that we're doing, when he died for our sins and rose again and we confess and believe him and crown him Lord and King over our life, he takes that sin out of our heart. When he takes that sin out of our heart, our heart becomes new. We become new creatures in Christ. All the old things are washed away and all things are new. So that sin that once lived there in our heart, God took it to the cross and says, sin no more. I got it. I'm taking care of it for you. You don't have to worry about it. But in order to get your heart clear of the sin, you really need to read that John 3.16 Get a full understanding of what it means so that you too can confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and he washes away all my sins and he gives me a new heart and he resides in my heart. And therefore, I can go back and tell others, my heart is good. I'm clean. He's forgiven me and my heart is new. And why is it new? Because Jesus is love and Jesus lives in our hearts. So let's just pray over that word and think about it and really think about the things that, you know, your heart sometimes doesn't want to do. You need to take those things to God in prayer so that he can clean our heart up. 
So kids, I hope that you really get a full understanding today of how you can have a new, clean heart. One that is obedient to God. One that loves and worships God. One that confesses him Lord and King. Why? Because he took my sins to the cross. He died in my place. But he did not stay dead. He rose again. And now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he's praying and interceding and believing for us. And some of you guys know what intercession means because we talk about it right here at Cross Kids. So thank God that he died on the cross for me for you, for your family, and your friends. And we get to say that we believe in him and we confess him as Lord and King and that we can now live eternally with him because we confess him and believe that he died for our sins and that we now have clean hearts. Thank you, Jesus, for being the love that cleansed my heart and cleansed all the cross kids' hearts because we all are new creatures once we confess and believe in him. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for our message today, Father. We thank you for John 3.16, which tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Father, we believe that, and we confess it, and we give you all praise, all honor and glory that your word has fell on good ground today, and that it's gonna take root in our souls, and our hearts are gonna become new, and we're no longer going to be wavering, going back and forth in the things that are good or bad, but we're gonna look to you, Father, for the answers so that our heart continues to do them right thing and father we will give you all our prayers in jesus name amen so cross kids that was an awesome message man i, I felt the message for myself i i think i need to go back and reread it again um but it was such a good word for me i, I hope it was good for you too but you know just like uh anything else you know, Sister Ethel getting that rumbling in her tummy. And I know my cross kids, you know, after you done had your praise and your worship and you guys have had uh, a chance to sit down and uh, at the table of the Word of God. And you've now got that Bible lesson in you. I know you guys are ready for a Bible bite. So guess who we have up next? We have that awesome Sister Kim and Sister Tanisha that have the Bible Bites ready for you guys to help you guys prepare an awesome Bible Bite right there at home. So Sister Kim and Sister Nish, I'm sure they're ready. I'm going to turn it on over to them. So get ready for an awesome Bible Bite. Hi, Girl Skids. Welcome to Bible Bites. We are glad to be with you once again. Last week was so much fun, and we heard some of your uh, comments and the things you wanted to say, and yeah, we had some struggle snacks last week. But this week, we tried to do a little bit better for Bible Bites. We're all at home and doing things different, so we thought about what you might have at home. If you have some bananas at home and mom and dad or the adult with you says it's okay for you to do this week's lesson with us, you could, but you can always do the rewind and see us again, because we know you miss us. So this week, Nish and I have bananas, some kind of cereal, whatever cereal you have at home, struggle snacks, okay? Some raisins and some graham crackers. So what we're gonna do is just put a lesson together. We know that Jesus is love and his love is amazing. So we're gonna try to make an amazing snack today with you today. Got our little gloves gloves on here. And we're gonna take this banana. Yeah. My lovely assistant will go ahead and open this one. When you look at this banana, it kinda has the shape of the letter J. It's amazing, just like Jesus. 
So that's the first thing that we're gonna use for our snack. Nish is peeling the banana out. So that peel is like us. We got some layers on us too. We got some things inside that you wouldn't see, you wouldn't even know about until God started working on us. Some little hard pointy parts, some parts is just all limp and lazy, but God can work on all of that, take it all off, I mean, this is the one you can't, can't get rid of that. And we become beautiful, just like this banana laying on this plate. Oh, we're getting ready for the Bible Bites now. So what this is going to do next is we're going to cut this banana in half. Sometimes we got to get some things cut off of us too. We're all working on our little fitness plan here. So sometimes you just get a, get a little cut. She's using a plastic knife to stay safe. Yes. So a grown up could do that for you or an older sibling, someone that will make sure that everybody is okay. Okay. Good. So she got it nice and cut. That banana using that plastic knife. And then she's going to put it right together, both ends. When she does that, it has almost the shape of a heart. So we use our good imaginations that God gave us and we can see how Look, I'm going to turn it over to the cameraman over there. Oh, yeah. look at us doing big things. You want to show it to him now? Okay. Y'all ain't going to believe this. Let's give her a hand. Clap here. Comes here. Comes here. Comes. Oh, look at that. A banana. Even with what we have inside of us, God can make it even more beautiful. So here we go with the extra. You know, I'm all about doing extra. So now we got our little cinnamon snacks here. Yes. You know, these are some little Scooby-Doo snacks. I don't know. Sometimes <laughs> I just have to laugh at my friends. I said, now, Sister Ethel was like, let's make a little snack with some cinnamon stuff. And how she picked some Scooby, Scooby snack Doo. bones. But you know, God knows us all the way down to the bones that are in our body. So if we just put these bones inside, you know, because Mm, yeah, just like the word, we got some dry bones around mm -hmm. here. But these dry bones gonna get better. We got some little banana, some dry bones, and then these ain't even frosted flakes. She done found some, <laughs> some flakes that's frosted. <laughs> so let's see what else she has here. Now I thought this was frosted flakes. These are some flakes that's frosted. But you know, it's some flaky people around too. But God loved them as well. And he can take that flakiness Put it on it, sprinkle it up. Oh, we're working with some stuff yeah. now. Look at this. What else we got? Mm -hmm. Cinnamon toasters. You know, sometimes we all can get a little toasty. Something happen, just make you hot, make you just feel like you want to burn up. But you have to give that over to God too because Jesus is love. Take that love of the Father, get your mind right, get your heart right, and keep going. Oh, look at this little snack. Yeah. So the last thing we found in the cabinet, so that we didn't have struggle snacks, but we had Bible bites, is some raisins. Yes. And a raisin, do you know what a raisin started out as? Great. A raisin started a out grape. as a grape. So, don't be fruity. You know, keep yourself on the right track. But that raisin came from that grape. And so now the skin can be a little tough, a little hard. And sometimes when we let that sin that Sister Ethel told us about stay in our hearts and don't be right, well, then we can have a hard exterior. Inside though, we're still sweet. And when we mix ourselves with the love of God, oh, it all comes together. Oh, Sister Miss, show me a snack you got now. Oh, so this would be a nice treat anytime for you to have. Something you could do with your family, you could do it with your friends if they're over, as long as you all are social distancing and being safe. That's right. We just want to let you know how much we love you, how much God loves you, because just like him, you are amazing. And we love you. We want you to stay tuned in. We'll see you the next time. And remember that Jesus, Jesus is love. love. 
So Cross Kids, that's a wrap for this Sunday. We had an awesome time. We started off with prayer and welcome and praise and worship. You got your word about Jesus being loved. You got an awesome snack from the Bible Bites team. I um, hope you're enjoying that banana and snack. Was it good, Naraya? It was good, so. Okay, Cross Kids, it's time to say so long, but not goodbye, because we'll be back to see you again very soon. So until then, go back and check out some of those older YouTube messages. Make sure you rewind the lesson. Talk to your family. Share it with a friend. Tell somebody, hey, by the way, call the office. Leave me a message so I can talk to you. So I know you guys are out there. My Cross Kids, I miss you guys so much. You're always in my heart, and you you guys are amazing. But above all, always remember that Jesus is love. love.